My name is Jim Bass. I'm the emergency planner for Queen Anne's County Department of Emergency Services. Uh, DES covers um, the, the EMS response for the county. Uh, we coordinate with the, the local fire departments. Um, if you think about the, uh, the hazmat response with all the guys in the big scary suits and stuff, uh, we help coordinate that as well. We do the 911 call center for the county. Um, emergency management, uh, our division is a little bit different. We do more of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, when it comes time to coordinate the resources, um, call in the big guns, uh, do all the behind the scenes stuff, that is generally us. Um, our big thing is the, the weather uh, forecasting and dissemination of hazardous weather information. Uh, we're big weather nerds in our office. Uh, so um, the, the tornadoes and the winter storms and the flooding and stuff like that that we're prone to around here, that's really uh, our bread and butter. That's what we get excited about. So you'll see some of that in the slides here coming up. Uh, so we're gonna, we've got four different presentations. Uh, Connie Ralph is with us from the health department and she and I are gonna trade back and forth. I'm gonna talk about emergency preparedness and then in a little bit, I'm gonna talk about uh, evacuation. Um, how you get the warnings for evacuation and then what you need to do when you need to get out. Um, you said you guys are new to the county, is that right? Excellent. So hopefully you will leave armed with lots of good information uh, pertinent to your new home. So what we're going to cover in our first module, we're going to talk about disasters. What is a disaster and uh, how is it designed, uh, defined? How does it affect us? Uh, we're going to talk about emergency supply kits and uh, what we want to include in those. We're going to talk about plans and drills. We're gonna talk about uh, some additional resources that we can use when we start thinking about uh, all of the stuff that we've learned tonight. So what is a disaster? We've got hurricanes, got tornadoes, got uh, nuclear bombs, we've got, um, I don't know, what, what else is in that picture? Tsunami or earthquake. Um, there's a lot of different stuff out there and we're learning more and more every day that we need to be prepared for things that maybe we weren't thinking about yesterday. We had an earthquake here, what, a year ago, two years ago? And I remember being at work that day, standing in the hallway talking to a coworker and realized, that's new, that's not something I've ever experienced before. And you know, that, that changed the entire game. It was just a teeny tiny little earthquake hardly did any damage, uh, but it, it, it scared everybody because we had never seen anything like it before. Uh, so the, this, is, this is kind of the, the, the nerd coming out in me. Uh, the, the difference between disaster and hazard um, is good. Uh, it's good to have an understanding of, of what the two are. Uh, there's a lot of stuff up there to read that you don't really need to focus on. Uh, just know that the hazard is the, the actual thing uh, the, the weather system or the event or whatever, and then disaster is the response to that, or the, or not the response to it, the effects of that, I should say. Uh, you know, tree falls in the woods, doesn't really matter if it makes a sound or not. Um, if the tree falls on somebody, then it matters, and then it is a disaster. So natural disasters versus man-made disasters, uh, most of what we deal with on a regular basis, fortunately, are the natural disasters. Uh, hurricanes, tornadoes are uh, the big ones that we have to think about around here. Um, North County, we, uh, we get a pretty fair number of uh, straight line wind uh, damaging effects, um, sometimes some tornadic activity. Uh, winter storms, uh, seems like every winter we have one or two things that we have to worry about. Uh, the man-made disasters, fortunately, we don't have to worry about so much the massive power outages, the terrorist attacks, stuff like that. Um, you know, we're, we're not too far from the national capital area. Uh, we've got the Bay Bridge right here in our backyard. So a, a terrorist threat of some sort is something that we do have to think about, but fortunately that's, uh, that's not a, a top priority for us all the time. Locally, our chief concern is flooding. Uh, coastal flooding as well as, as riverine flooding. Um, you know, we're, we're not Delaware, we don't have 
as much to worry about in terms of coastal flooding, uh, but everything on, on Ken Island where it's, it's getting impacted directly from the Chesapeake Bay is certainly something to, to worry about. Uh, but how, how the water uh, comes up the rivers and the streams, the creeks that feed off of the Chesapeake Bay, uh, the way the water swells and sticks around, um, it's a totally different ball game from how the water actually interacts in the bay. Uh, so there's just more stuff to more stuff to consider, and uh, things that you as a homeowner want to be aware of if you live directly on the bay or if you have uh, riverfront property or whatever the case may be. Um, some of the byproducts of of uh, of flooding that we want to think about: um, mud flow is a giant flow of mud. Um, that really is only going to happen for us in instances of really severe uh, flash flooding. That's not something that we have to worry about terribly often. Um, liquefaction is, is more of a, a serious thing for us to think about. It's when the, the ground essentially just turns to soggy, muddy mess. And uh, like you see in the picture up here, washes away roads and culverts and stuff like that. Uh, so then we have to call out the guys from Department of Public Works and they have a field day with it. Uh, this, this picture that you see here was, um, I believe, John Powell Road um, out towards Sudlersville. And um, right after uh, Hurricane Irene, I believe, um, washed away a bunch of stuff there. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's not just some threat that they have to think about, um, you know, out in Tennessee or out in Colorado. It happens right here in our own backyards. So putting together emergency supply kits. Um, we have some great re resources up here on the table that'll get you thinking some more about what can go in your emergency supply kit. Um, we have some bags that are great starters for your emergency supply kit that have just some very, very basic things in them. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about what should go in there and uh, some things that you might want to think about uh, to tailor your emergency supply kit uh, to, to your own best needs. Weather radios are an absolute must. Uh, I'll tell that to anybody and everybody. You can go out and buy one for $300 or you can go to Walmart and pick one up for $25. Uh, there's, they've got all kinds of bells and whistles. I can't say that one is any better than the others, uh, but the, it's, it's very important to have one um, because when you're getting the information directly from the National Weather Service, uh, you know it's the most up-to-date, you know it's the best. It's tied into the, the national alerts that go out from FEMA. Uh, so, you know, if you lose power, um, a, a weather radio is key. Um, the, the ones that have the hand crank on the side is, is uh, yeah, that, that's, I think, the most important feature because, you know, the power can be out for as long as it needs to be. Uh, you're still going to have that as a functional tool. Uh, food and water, we say think about one gallon of water per person per day. Uh, you look at most of the, uh, the federal websites, the disaster preparedness websites, they're going to talk about being prepared for 72 hours. I can't honestly stand up here and tell you it's going to be 72 hours or it's going to be 36 hours or it's going to be 108 hours. Um, you know, pre prepare for what you think you're going to need to prepare for and, and, and use the resources that you have available to you. Uh, manual can opener, again, is, uh, is another uh, very key thing because um, everybody thinks about putting all the canned foods in the disaster supply kit. And uh, you say, well, I've got the electric can opener in the kitchen. <laughs> electric can opener is no good without the electricity on. Um, you know, pillow, blanket, sleeping bag, all the things that we want to make us feel comfortable. Um, First aid kits, everybody knows about that. Um, medical supplies is something I think that catches people off guard a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm a type one diabetic. I've got to figure out how to store my insulin in that kit and keep it refrigerated for a prolonged period of time for it to do me any good. Uh, preparing for the seasons um, as we pack our changes of clothes. Um, that kind of ties into maintaining your kit down in the bottom. Uh, you want to refresh your stuff every once in a while and make sure it's appropriate for whatever's going on outside. Uh, we don't want to have shorts and tank tops um, in our disaster supply kit when the big winter storm hits and we're out of power for three days. Uh, important documents, um, you know, maybe if you have uh, a copy of your will that you want to put in there, uh, you know, should anything bad happen. Um, stuff, uh, paperwork for your car, your house, uh, stuff like that. Um, sheltering supplies, 
Uh, Connie's going to talk to us a little bit later about sheltering, but a uh, you know, different sort of sheltering. If we need to stay in place, uh, what are what are we going to need uh, to protect ourselves from the element? Or, um, you know, if, if we're going to be picking up and moving somewhere, but we don't know for certain where we're going to end up, what do we need to take with us to make sure that we're prepared? Um, the storage locations, we want to think about, you know, it, is my kit going to live in my car? You know, am I prim primarily on the road for my job? Um, you know, do I want to keep it at my house? If I'm over at my kid's house all the time, do I want to keep an, an extra supply kit there so I know I have stuff with me? Uh, we want to think about different situations that we can be in and how we're going to have the stuff available to us. Plans, plans, plans. Uh, I like plans. It's in my job title. Um, I would be in trouble if I didn't like plans and planning and all of that fun stuff. Um, but I'm going to try not to harp on any of this stuff too much. Um, we want to plan for our risks, our geographic vulnerabilities, and our, um, our own personal risks. Um, you know, that's thinking about the medical needs, thinking about the friends and family that we have in the area. Uh, think about the resources that we have available to us and what some of those deficiencies might be. Um, we want to uh, consider other family members, consider our pets, uh, make sure that we're really encompassing the entire family when we're doing our planning. Um, if, if you uh, live in an active neighborhood and you have other people that you want to involve in, in the planning process, bring your neighbors, bring the whole street together. Um, planning for locations kind of goes along with that. Uh, do we have a plan for our church? Um, do I have a plan for my kids in school? Um, you know, again, thinking about all of the different situations we could possibly be in. Um, and like we said, planning is a family affair. We want to involve as many people as possible. Exercising the plan is very important. I think lots of people uh, find themselves in the situation where they say, okay, great, I put my, uh, put my plan together, and we know how to communicate with each other and find each other, and we've got all our supplies and stuff, and then the plan just sits and nobody ever does anything with it. That's not doing anybody any good. Um, so I will advocate um, exercising your plan as, as much as possible. Um, you know, doing fire drills with your family, doing evacuation drills where you say we're going to meet uh, down, down, at the, down at the stoplight or down at the intersection, um, communications plans, um, shelter in place plans, you know, if, if uh, something goes on where we can't get out, um, making sure we know how we're going to stay put in, uh, in times of emergency. Here we have listed some additional resources. It's a lot of websites. Um, all of these websites, I think, are addressed in some way or another in some of the materials that we have uh, handed out here this evening. Um, we've got our Facebook page. We have the uh, emergency management information um, on the federal level with ready.gov, um, on the state level with the MEMA page, um, a link to our site, a link to the health department site. Um, our local um, weather office is in Philadelphia. Um, we're in there in their radar pattern, um, and they always have up-to-date uh, storm information uh, should that be happening. So we breezed really quick through disasters, supply kits, uh, plans, and some additional resources. Does anybody have any questions before I turn it over to Connie? Excellent. Yes, sir. Um, we downsized and went into a condo. Um, do you come out? and give talks to the community, uh, you know, so you can give a kind of a community deal of what we should be doing. Absolutely. As a community to get ready. Yeah, the, the question was, do we come out and do talks for the communities, uh, for individual communities, neighborhoods and such? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, I can sit here and talk to you till I'm blue in the face about, you know, ideal preparedness stuff for the county or for the state or for the country. Um, but it's not doing any good unless we can tailor it to our own specific needs. And so if I can talk to everybody in your neighborhood group or, uh, you know, just people who live on your block, uh, then we can really get down into the nuts and bolts of what we need to be doing on an individual and family level. Um, so, yeah, please. Um, I have my business cards over there with contact information on it. Uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. I would be happy to set something up. 